Hello, everyone, and welcome to my podcast. Today is the last podcast, but it is a very special one because I have a very special guest. And I will introduce her in a minute, but we are going to explore as we did before, what holds us back in life. But today we're going to go a few steps farther and deeper so it can give you the best tools to shine and be the person that you aim to be. And as I said in my life, in my uh, previous podcast to people that don't know me, I'm not a motivational coach or a therapist. Uh, for this, I have real experts. But I'm a person that, against all odds, came to the UK with one suitcase and a dream with no connections, with so many objections and rejections from family of that madness to come to this country. And all what I wanted is to express who I am and to become international singer-songwriter. And I made it. I made it to an extent because we are in a journey. And that's why I decided with the release of my single, Beauty of the Duty, What Holds You Back, to go farther so you will be moved by it, not only by the music, but by the wisdom of all these people that I bring to you. And I'm as well going to, I'm moved by each person. And um, right, and now I'm very excited to, um, to invite uh, and to welcome uh, Valerie do wire uh, that I just met her on Twitter a few weeks ago, but when she agreed to to be interviewed and send me her book that just came a month ago, uh, if you can show no matter you've got it, no matter what six steps to renovate your life that just came in months ago i just understood that i am with the right person talking so welcome valerie to thank you Tala. it's wonderful to be here yes it's um uh, um so we just know for a few weeks uh, via twitter um but when I read uh, your book, started to read, and uh, I highly, highly recommend it. We'll give all the details and you'll tell us more about it. But then I saw that we have, first of all, a lot of um, things that connect us and also teachers like Napoleon Hill and a lot of the quotes that you use there, they, they are things that I lived my life. I think my fans do not know that I used to travel with my late husband near the Royal Albert Hall and said, I'll perform here. Now, I'm not a super big star to perform in Royal Albert Hall yet, but I made it. I made it. So I am very much into all the things that you are going to explore, vision. The name of my last tour was Vision of Hope. So uh, that's why I'm so excited to have you with us today. So let's just start with a more gener general question uh, of, that related to the title of the podcast, What Holds Us Back Just uh, in Life? Well, we yeah. hold ourselves <laughs> back. <laughs> um, but it's very interesting to hear your story, Tally, because we are more powerful than we may ever know until put 
to the greatest test. So it's our thoughts, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. Rene Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. So does it follow I am who I think I am? So then it follows that our thoughts determine everything. Everything. They shape everything. our very world. Mm. So there are things that we can do, but those times when we're maybe not feeling so positive. Yeah. And interestingly, um, I was uh, giving a talk in a group last evening and I said, I hope you don't mind if I do a couple of fun exercises. One is to eliminate internal negatives. The other is to weaken, if not make them disappear, external negatives. Mm. So there are things that we can do to change our mood, to lift our mood. And we have choices every second of every minute of every day. So what do you choose? Exactly. Mm. <laughs> this is not that song, but my song Free Will, Free Will saying, in every breath I take, I don't know what is on my way. I don't know what you bring to me. I know my will is free. So I, uh, I really believe that every second we have those cho choices. But still, still, sometimes we think we, get, we, we have it all. We are confident. I'm sure... As, uh, as someone that uh, I, I think I was so uh, excited in the introduction that I didn't say Valerie's a uh, few books of bestsellers in Amazon, isn't it? It's not mm -hmm. only one and um, award-winning and you've been on television and um, you'll tell us very soon about the trademark of the vital life vision blueprint is that correct did i say it right well i i pop that word life in there to explain why it's vital vital means life living alive mm. so vital vision blueprint is something that is already inside of us um, from birth but we may not have the key, or if we have the key, we don't know where the lock is to open it and bring it out. And that's the purpose of my program and my book. And it's, it's created as a result of my own significant emotional events and near-death life experiences. Yes, so I didn't know if to touch it uh, or not, but I was so moved to hear um, about what you've been through and if you like, and, and that is, again, my philosophy, take the minus and turn it into plus. So you had like the ultimate uh, tragedy that you turned it to be who you are. So can you share with us a little bit uh, about it and how how that um, traumatic experience actually made you to shine and, and bring uh, light to so many people. Okay, well, I think the most important message from that is, you know, people ask me, will it upset you to talk about this? Well, no, because each of us can reach a state where we can look back at an experience and remove ourselves from the emotion of it. Yeah. We can analyze what happened and we can learn from it. And then it becomes a gift. And it's yeah. a gift that we use to help other people. Mm -hmm. But if I say it very quickly, um, 
I was in a major road traffic accident, a backseat passenger with no seatbelt at the time. Um, our vehicle was sandwiched, a um, car in front, and a coach that came behind us at probably 60 miles an hour. We were um, shunted off the road. Long story short, um, panic. There was smoke, there were fumes, you know, panic, what's happening? Couldn't get out because the parcel shelf had trapped me in wow. the chair. But just before this happened, I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned and I saw what was happening. Wow. I screamed to my daughter who was driving, get down, get down, it's not going to stop. This, I'd only recently from flying learned about the safety position. Wow. So that I think um, probably saved our lives. Of course. Okay. But I, I did go through the experience of uh, my life going by me, walking or floating down a tunnel towards the light, ready to go, but then suddenly I found myself saying, and I'd been praying and praying, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I haven't fulfilled my purpose. Wow. And I woke up in hospital <laughs> wow. And, wow. and we thought, well, okay, that, that's it. You know, being checked over, released home, same day. And then the nightmare began of course. two years. Wow. Um, and it was only three months later when they discovered the top three uh, vertebrae were fractured. Wow. So, I knew why I was in pain, but um, the thing is, um, what helped to get me out of that, on my birthday, my family handed me an envelope, and um, I opened the envelope. Bear in mind, I'd been a nightmare passenger for two years. Yeah. yeah. Open the envelope. Not only am I going to drive a car, but it's a racing car around a racing yeah, ready. circuit. I couldn't believe it. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, that started my... Um, Your journey. I was so exhilarated after this drive. Um, really? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so sometimes we have to do something really different. Um, and really step out of our comfort zone oh, because no, that right, right. comes the exhilaration and the excitement mm -hmm. and success. So you want to tell me that you are driving since then uh, this, uh, this car? <laughs> I, in another life, I think I would have been a racing driver. I love it. I love it. <laughs> wow, that is so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> because my late husband was a hypnotherapist and did what you're doing. So, so that's why I'm so familiar with this world. But it couldn't help me because I had a similar experience, but nothing of an accident. I was driving my car. The gear was not working. I heard noises. And luckily, I stopped the car on the left side of the road and, uh, and nothing happened because I was quick, but since then I, had, I have two fears. One is to drive on a motorway. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Yeah, since then, that was in Israel, but in England. So anyway, so I, I try to go above the fear, but you know, my inner voice, my inner voice just saying, no, I don't, I don't need to do it because you know, for you, it, it was a life changing experience. For you, it was absolutely life experience. So that, that is amazing. So when did you actually start to get the trademark of Vital Life Vision blueprint? Was it at the hard time when you were at home, the two years recovery or after that? 
not in the in the two years because I became, had a quality like dyslexic. Right. So my writing and words and sentences, it was mm-hmm. like um, somebody had got into my head and there were lots of filing cabinets and they'd ransacked everything and mixed it all up. Right. So I had to come back from there. Right. Um, so the actual um, process is I've been working with clients for over 30 years yeah. What happened as a result of the accident, I came back stronger. Um, I had more to offer on a much deeper level with people. Mm-hmm. And this is the feedback that they give me from going through the program. They thought they understood about vision uh, and these other points, um, mindset, motivation, meditation. But they said, that what happened going through the program was so many levels deeper than they ever realized they could mm, go. Mm. That's what I felt as well. So, so I believe that all of that uh, program is very much uh, is what in your, um, in your book, in your latest book. Um, and so we all know um, that we hold ourselves back and we have the power and everything, but still, still we have two things that I found in your book so far that I would like to explore. Is that self-sabotage? Can we speak about it? Because I think that I kind of was in that uh, category when I look at my personal journey. And it's so easy to be in that uh, category of self-sabotage. And, and there are different degrees That's right. of sabotage. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, you know, sometimes uh, we can say things that we wouldn't say about ourselves. We wouldn't say to our dearest friend or our yes. family. <laughs> Um, and so that's really where the rubber band comes in. And I've broken it again. Um, it's had so much use. That's okay. just a little, you know, it's not just about thinking. It's about doing and being. But there are techniques that we can use. Um, but... For me, it's having a powerful vision that pulls you rather than a pain that's pushing you. So we can visualize. And the more we experience visualizing, we can reframe our lives. We can see ourselves as we want to be. And the clearer and more specific that is, the less we have time for this self-sabotage. <laughs> we can't go into a whole lesson here today, but I will say that everybody who's reading the book at the moment and are doing the exercises is getting raving reviews and five-star reviews because they are experiencing the journey. Mm, the mm. journey in six steps you can do I recommend six weeks. Right. Take each chapter and spend the week with it and do the exercises. The last exercise, by the time you get to it, mm-hmm. is not an exercise because you've already undergone a transformation. Right, right, right. That is very, very interesting. So to do it in, in six weeks. So what, why did you do the six? Was it six different things that they are the foundation to your philosophy that, uh, that, uh, that if you yes. want to say a few words about it, obviously I want people to get the book. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you can say a few words about those uh, just briefly so people will get it. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to share. They are six specific steps in the exact correct order that they need to be taken 
I also give um, environmental checklists uh, and resources at the back of the book because you need to put yourself in the right environment to do the exercises. And when I was doing this live with uh, clients, VIP clients, uh, we go to a very lovely location, uh, have some luxury, um, beautiful aromas, scenery, music. Yeah. The yeah. whole thing is about the elements that create impact. And this was one of the biggest learnings I've had from some of my experiences. When you create things with impact, you don't forget them. So yeah. it's not like you don't create a vision board by cutting pictures out and sticking them on a board alone. You need to attach emotion to it. Yes, yes. So the yes. steps in the book, you learn to meditate, you motivate your mindset, you clear your mind clutter yeah. so that you have a clean space to yeah. begin the creative process of creating your mm. vital vision blueprint. Mm. You vitalize your values so that they're congruent, congruent with your vision, mm. so that nothing sabotages it and you don't because you just go straight. Yeah, and from there, once you've got your vital vision blueprint, which is out in the world it's real you bring it out because it's not real until you bring it out and you yeah. can share it yeah yeah and um, so then you storm proof mm -hmm. the success of that you know what's what am i name and shame your obstacles befriend your resources and you probably have way way more than mm. you realize mm. so that's the journey and it's leading to uh, manifesting your magnificent master plan. Yes. But, yes. You know, yes. in reality. Absolutely. I mean, to that step. <laughs> but it's very it all. But it's so <laughs> difficult to convince people, you know, people will people that are not into understanding that our thoughts create our reality is very difficult you know uh people that are very rational they just do not understand it but and i don't think you can convince them but how could we convince them today now in the pandemic in the change it will take so long until people will the you know the economics of the world things are not going to be easy for people this is the time one of the things that i actually really like that you asked in the book did you ever go on and do something without worried about the finance result and i'm the biggest example you know i had a very rich husband in israel i left everything just to go with my dream and uh, I think 99% of the people in the world will not do it because we are so much need that security and safety. And the question, there is a thin line. Not everyone has the courage. How can you motivate people to go with their vision if they don't have the, um, the courage is one, but also the, the possibility, the practical possibility? Uh, yeah, there are two things. Um, vision can create more movement than money. You can do things. If you have a vision, you attract what's in your vision. And it's not all about the money. Business is not all about the money. Businesses are now realizing their why is more important things are changing and they're changing rapidly mm. we're beginning to realize you know the pandemic has been such an amazing opportunity to yeah. stop yeah who who was busy busy doing doing trying yeah. to get more Absolutely. and Absolutely. it's good that we've had this pause yeah. so many people are telling me they 
in this cause they've written their book they've yeah. taken their programs online yeah yeah um, yeah yeah definitely definitely it's brought a, a lot a lot of goodness to people and that's opportunity it's a one life opportunity for people now so i really recommend to all of you to uh the website will be in the description to get your book and they get the book on your website or uh, they can get the book in kindle or paperback on amazon waterstones leading independent bookstore okay so one thing that i like to um uh explore with you that i didn't understand it yet from your book is the values the vision of the values um could you uh, yes when you know your values i didn't understand it uh, okay. so well so uh, let's have a little example yeah um, i am passionate about helping people create the life they love because i think it's a, a step towards creating a wonderful world which serves all of us um, I like to uh, recycle, reduce, reinvent. I don't like waste. What if I want to take someone on new to my team and I, I see that they are constantly wasting resources, for example? Yeah. How do I get along with that? person because they're not you know they're not they're not in tune with your yeah, value yeah right. so, or, or if we're having a conversation with someone yeah. um, people who may say one thing and do something else that's their values right. not what they say but what they do it will show um, and in terms of your own vision, uh, the kind of things you could do to self-sabotage is see that opportunities would come up that are absolutely right for that vision. Um, but you'll know that they're right. If they're not right, and this is not just your values, but it's your gut feeling as well but you'll know it's not right for you. Mm -hmm. So values are probably one of the main reasons of conflict. Right. So if you look at how wars break out, yes, it's about ego. Yeah. But there's something happening with the values of the two sides involved in that debate as to why it resulted in anger and war rather than collaborating right 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 yeah. so it, it is a completely different thing than uh, finding your own purpose now i understand why why it, it is a very different thing yeah. your purpose comes out of your vision usually yeah. what will happen um, because it's holistic in the vision is your life, your family, your business, uh, your communities, the world. It's all relevant to you and your world. But what usually comes out will be something unexpected. It's a big thing. It's your one big thing. It's like... Um, for example, one of my clients, Karen Williams, founded the Body Bag Foundation. I don't know if you reached that part yet, but... No, I didn't. No. Her foundation, yeah. it provides um, a backpack, uh, gender and age relevant, so for a boy or a girl, and we'll have in there either pajamas, nightdress, um, hairbrush, toothbrush, toiletries, yeah. a book, a picture frame, uh, a TED teddy bear, a buddy teddy bear. And these are given to children in, in the UK who are in emergency care 
because of they've been taken away from home, probably in just all they're standing up in through to domestic abuse or violence. Wow. And um, I so love that she's doing this. And so I supported her. And um, uh, my company is a partner in B1G1, a global giving initiative. And um, we, I kind of mentored her and she qualified uh, with charity to become funded globally by that wow. organization. Wow. However, every yeah. year now, and you may not realize, something like 48,000 children are taken into emergency care and they need this resource and the feedback from the mothers too um, when mm -hmm. this happens is absolutely amazing. But uh, everyone who goes on uh, the program, Destination Me, we donate a, a buddy bag. Right. For people who buy the book, yeah. for every book sold, a girl in Cambodia receives a day of education and we plant a fruit tree for an impoverished family in Malawi for nutrition and future income. Wow, that's so beautiful. It's just so moving and beautiful. So thank you. I think I will want to write, uh, write it all in the description. So whoever, so, so let's, uh, because our time is coming out now. So where can people, where is the best way to find uh, about your work? Uh, and is it a website that I can direct everyone, or even if they want a private sessions with you, is that uh, on on a website? Yes. Which website it is? Because I was myself looking for few, and uh, and I just needed to know which one is the main one. Okay, it's mywonderfullifecoach.co.uk. And then uh, at the moment, I think we have still, uh, it's coming down soon, the free um, digital book for Clear Your Minds Clutter. And oh, also, really? Yeah. Oh. And also there's uh, a link there to book on a call, uh, a free call, a 30-minute session. Um, if at that session they want more, we can talk about that. Wonderful, wonderful. Actually, the decluttering was uh, one, of, one of the interesting things that for me personally is very, very interesting. Uh, so what can I say? We can chat uh, uh, forever. And uh, it was absolutely, um, uh, yeah, great honor to talk with you. And especially at the end to hear how you take all this wisdom and not only give to people um, tools to have a better life, but also donate to people, to rescue people, children. Uh, so that, that is very, very moving. So thank you so much for that. And, and uh, I will write all the details and I hope to meet up in person one day. I look forward to that, Tally. I know we will. I know as well. I know as well. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much.